daughter Zansu of Seuss House Park are engaged. Engaged, we engaged. When asked when the big day will be, Johnny Good Jr. said, I have to think of my future. Someday I'll be taking over my father's work in this town, and I need to be ready. Peggy Sue report for the Hillsdale Happy had nothing further to add. Oh, what's there to add? What about our future, John? What about it? I need to go to college first. You know that. It's just you sound so, so cold, John. Except for the engage the engage part. Tina Tattle says it all as far as I see it. I should get through college before you get My old man does expect a lot from me, you know. And we have a reputation for anything. I don't know. 
quit last year to work for my father. I had to choose between the cheerleading squad and the school newspaper. Not all of us are as lucky as you, John E. Good of the Goods Up on the Hill Hill Sale. Not everyone has everything like you do. Hey, so. Yes, John. I met my dad, 59 Studebaker. His new be eight. You did? Of course I did. I'm, I'm just borrowing it. I mean, he lent it to me and all. I just forgot for a moment. <coughs> she's, she's a real charity, huh? Um, oh, go make sure no one's breathed on her. <laughs> Oh, 
What do you mean? Of course I dropped off the laundry. Maybe I should have checked the pockets and... From where I work, at my dad's, answering the phones, I can see everything that goes on in Lenny's. I saw you walk in, talk back, and throw your laundry at his face. If he did copy your keys, I wouldn't blame him, even if he stole your car. You insult him every time you see him, and today you insulted his father. I didn't steal his car. I know you didn't, Matt. I, for one, can vouch for Matt's character. Mr. Billings, the school counselor, has nothing but good things to say about you, Matt. Say what? That's right. I know you didn't steal John's car. You have become a fine, upstanding citizen, unlike some others here. <laughs> you know real repentance and the power of finding forgiveness in the eyes of others. This is a lesson some of us need to learn. If you're referring to me, Miss Molly, I can assure you that just because I can't walk and bounce a book on my head at the same time doesn't mean I'm on a fine and standing system. Your class is a joke. I can see that you would think so, Mona. I don't think anything of your inability to master the basics of etiquette. Personally, it doesn't bother me in the slightest that you can't remember to cross your ankles when you sit. But you'll soon learn the cost of walking to your own individual feet in this town. I lost my job because I was too concerned with walking to the feet of my own drummer. What do you mean, Miss Molly? She means she lost her job because she wasn't doing it properly. Only in the eyes of some, like your father. And Headmaster Saunders. Of course. He and your father are the best judges of everything in this town. Isn't that so, John? You lost your history and geography job because you're filling our heads with a lot of nonsense. Guards about China, Russia, and Korea and how they really aren't all that bad. You mean North Korea, John. If history is as simple as you put it, it obviously means you weren't listening. I don't see how this is getting us any closer to finding my car. Did she call the police? Maybell, did you call the police? Oh! <laughs> if anyone has a reason to steal your car, it's Mona over here. Her father left her and her mother with nothing, and they're hunting for money. Oh, fine. Leave the poor immigrant family. This is ridiculous. How would I have stolen this car? I don't even know how to drive. Everyone knows your mother was a lawyer in Cuba, and now is working as a maid in my house. How humiliating that must be for her. Don't you dare talk about my mother. Well, like your mother, huh, John? Okay, then. Your father? Why did he flee, why did he flee Cuba, huh? He must have been a copy. Everyone knows he was caught up before the House on american Activities Committee and was questioned by McCarthy himself. Who was censured three months later. I told you, last time you called my father, call me that I'd punch his lights out. I think that's what you said. I'm sure of it. I even made a note of it. And then I failed you on rules of dating. Threatening your date does not earn you points toward passing my etiquette class, Miss Lisa. But he, John, Mona has terrible posture. But she's not a communist. And neither was her father, nor is her mother. If you had listened more attentively to my history lessons, you would know this. My parents fled Cuba. Fled. In 1951, when I was seven. My father had been a successful doctor in Havana, and things were going pretty well. But there was lots of poverty. No security. No real democracy. My father wanted better for his family. So we packed up and moved to the USA, right at the height of McCarthy's witch hunt. And Americans were fighting communists in Korea. And while things were going well in my father's practice, I guess he didn't fit the all-American mold. Yes, he was brought before the committee, but he's not communist. Turns out two of his patients were convicted. But did he didn't know. It's not the shoes. It killed him. He died not long after. The shame. I learned English quickly from my mother, who had been an attorney in Cuba, could only find work as a maid in John E. Good's house. It's a good job, but I'm tired of hearing how easy life is for the family on the hill, and how someday, someday, we'll be living life again as we once did in Cuba. I've heard enough of this soft story. Someone's stolen my car and like, wait, the keys. I can't find the keys.
face. Oh. Did anybody, anybody see that? Thank you very much.
buddy. You can have this one. Okay. I want that one. Just shave it off. <laughs> yeah. It would look like yours. I love you. <laughs> we got money, buddy. Holly, you see this? You're going to play now. <laughs> I don't need you no more.
angel behind you. Don't look, don't look, you'll scare her away. I need her back on my stage later. She's the best singer we got. Buddy Holly, are you still here? <laughs>
can't believe what's in my mind. I don't know what's going on. Is she still back there? Is she looking? She is. Here, guy, Bob. I'm sorry. Well, you're done, aren't you? Hey, Wolfie, how are you? You just call me Wolfie? That's only three feet you call me Wolfie. Did you, with me? <laughs> I do not, do you recall this woman? Was she, oh, she was the one playing frisbee in the back with us, wasn't she? <laughs> I threw the Earth Angels record and she hit me. Not my beard off. <laughs> it's okay, it'll come in. <laughs> you, you still got it, you got it. What happened? Not at all. 
Pack up, we're leaving. Right now. Right. No, I was joking, just keep the music playing. Woo. Can't walk back that far, there's like a perimeter. I can try though. I can get on the other side of the table. Talk to him. You think so? What? I can't hear you because you don't have a mic. Silly. Who's sitting here? Is there two of her? Do you have a clone? Do you need two seats? I'm going to take this for a second. My foot's stuck. Before the police arrived. 
breath. Now, John, you're quite sure you've had the keys on you the entire time. Because if you lost them, or left them in the ignition, anyone could have taken your car. Think carefully. When did you last have them? Well, I picked up Peggy from her dad's office, Sue's arrival supplies, filled the car up at the station, and then came here for a milkshake. We parked the car, and came in. And then the car was gone. And that's everything? Exactly uh, as it happened? No. We're not sure when, but, you know, when it happened, but we found out my scarf was missing. Your scarf? Mirror one. Your... Peggy's chiffon scarf. She held on the mirror so everyone from another were engaged.
would you be testing your theories? Don't you have anything better to do? Well, no, because I can't get my nuclear ethics and awareness club going! <laughs> Speaking of the bomb, it seems things aren't going so well for Sue's survival supplies, are they? I don't see what my dad's business has to do with any of your business or what it has to do with John's car. It's just that you too have reason to want to see Maybell's nuclear awareness club take place. The more people who hear Maybell's message, the more customers for your father. The more people rushing to stop their bomb shelters with enough food and supplies to last the fallout. And what has this to do with John's car? I don't know exactly. Perhaps you just want to teach him a lesson. Goodness knows he could use one. What do you mean by that? My mom told me. She overheard your father's talking the other day. What do you know? Or your mother? Or anyone? It seems Sue's survival supplies are in trouble, and Mr. Good plans on buying it out. But like every other business he's had his hands on, he'll ruin it. My father is a successful businessman. Huh, your father's a war profiteer. And how was it your father spent the war here and not in the Pacific, huh? Both he and Headmaster Saunders. Funny how both your fathers work together, isn't it? You know what, John? I think you should ship <laughs> off the old block. I thought you staged this whole thing so your father could cash in the insurance money. That's ridiculous. It's not so ridiculous, John. I mean, I read all about your father down at the county courthouse when I was researching for my editorial on that. I mean, I read all about your dad. It seems back then, he burned down his own, he was accused of burning down his own factory for the insurance money. People were caught in the flames and died. People died. My father was accused, not convicted, Peggy. He's not a criminal. It just means you have more to learn. Pity you and your father and I get a chance to teach you. I don't think my father would like you teaching me anything, Miss Molly. Rumor has it, you're a communist. I'm a what? That's why you lost your job, Miss Molly. And that's why your lessons are being recorded. They were being recorded. I knew it. And that's also why you spent so much time with the likes of Nona here. Everyone knows she's a red. Just look at her. How she's dressed. I dress this way so I'm beating it, imbecile. So, you like that beatnik. What's his name? The one whose poem wasn't even allowed into the country? Alan Ginsberg. Yeah, him. Obscene. That's what they called it. Hal is poetry. Dec Kyriak says so too. <coughs> How'd you get your hands on such filth? It's not filth. It's beatific. It's all about jazz and love and poetry and individuality. It has nothing to do with communism or stealing cars. So, you all wear black turtlenecks. That's original. It's just plain weird, Mona. Perhaps you're the chip off the old block. I always knew there was something odd about your mother, and I, I just had the feeling that she was listening to my father's phone calls. She's probably a spy, like Ethel Rosenberg. And we all know what happened to her, don't we, Miss Molly? My mother is a citizen of the United States of America. She's no spy. What about your mother? What do we know about her, huh, John? And I spend time with Mona after class because she's not only failing physics, she's failing my etiquette class. Great.
taking the easy way out, you know, like the draft in the war. Is your daddy going to pay to keep you out of the army like his daddy did for him? My father served in the National Guard. He might not have been a war hero, but he served his country. Alongside my master Saunders. Must be nice having parents who pay to keep their sons out of combat. My dad served to the very end. Ran supplies straight in West Berlin while your dad was taking it easy, smoking cigars. So they said the fire got started in your dad's factory, a lit cigar. So now you're getting lessons <laughs> from him, huh, Junior? How much insurance money did he actually get off of that fire? Why, you. You both need to get a hold of yourselves. Mega, get them something to drink. So, you haven't told me anything about my idea, John. I say this whole thing was staged. That you stole your own car, or I'm back here to see it for you. He just puts this little display of bravado on and makes us think you're enemies. What do you say? Should I tell the key when they get here? I think they'd be interested to hear all about it. Interested in what? Tell them what? That I stole my father's car for the insurance money? I should have guessed only you would feel such a kooky idea. Maybe you or May, though. You're both about as crazy as they come. <laughs> Besides, it's my father's car. He would be the one to get the money if I did do what you say I did. You always do what your father tells you to do, John. And it's a good thing, too. I'm glad he's not like your old man. I'm surprised it's such, that for such a smart girl, editor of the school paper, president of the French club, that you listen to him. That you work for him. It, it's for your own good, baby. When I tell you this, he's washed up. The business is a joke. Mona's right. My father's had plans to out of your dad's business for months now. He can make more money in one day than your father can make an entire week. He'll have that business up and running in no time. Maybe it's not all about the money, John. <laughs> sure it is. Only people who don't have money say that, baby. You don't fool me. I know why you're seeing me. I've known it for a long time. It makes it look good to wear my letter sweater. I, I wear your And, in fact, I'm glad someone stole your scarf. I'll sleep while getting rid of it anyways. It's probably the cheapest piece of material I've ever seen. That's it. Now you're going to get it. You sat in ulcer and knuckle sandwiches here. Here, eat this!